everyone has a seat of mindfulness. And if we practice uh, diligently, and then the grain, and then the seat of mindfulness in us will grow bigger and bigger. And any time we need that energy of mindfulness, we just touch it, and we have plenty of it in order to make use. And we know that mindfulness has the power, has the capacity to allow us to know what is going on. Going on in our body, going on in our feelings, going on in our mind, and going on in the world. So mindfulness has four objects. The first object of mindfulness is uh, body. And we have uh, four exercise on mindful breathing in order to take care of our of our body. And then we have the realm of uh, feelings. And we have uh, another set of of four to take care of our feelings and emotions. And the third uh, object of our mindfulness is the mind. The mind means uh, the mental formation. The mind is kind of a river, and the mental formations are drops of water. Succeeding each other and make a, a stream. So to meditate means to sit on the river of the mind and recognize every mental formation as it arises. This is to be aware of our in-breath and our breath. This is uh, to follow our in-breath and our breath. This is to be aware of our body. This is uh, to calm our body. This is to generate the joy. This is to generate uh, happiness. This is to be aware of the painful feeling or emotion. And this is to calm down the painful feeling and emotion. So mindfulness has the body as the first object, feelings as the second object, and mind as the third object. And the ninth exercise is to be aware of each mental formation as it is arise. Simple recognition, simple awareness, no attempt to fight or to, to grasp. No grasping, no fighting. Just allowed the mental formation to be there and recognize it. Hello, fear. I know you are there. I will take good care of you. So it is uh, useful to have a list of mental formations so that you can uh, recognize them easily, calling them by their true names. And the tenth, uh, the tenth uh, exercise of mindful breathing is to is to make uh, the landscape 
of the mind consciousness uh, beautiful, happy. Yesterday, we have seen that uh, consciousness has at least uh, two layers, and the lower layer is store consciousness. And there are good, wholesome seeds down here, and uh, among them, the seed of mindfulness, the seed of concentration, the seed of insight, the seed of understanding, love, non-violent, uh, joy, happiness, and so on. So the practice of the tenth exercise is to help, is to invite these wholesome seeds to manifest. The seed of mindfulness, the seed of concentration, the seed of insight, the seed of understanding, love, compassion. There are many good seeds in us. And if you want to be happy, we should learn the art of happiness, watering the good seeds in us. When we come to a retreat like this, we have a chance to water the good seeds. Everything we hear, we see, have the uh, the function to water the good seeds in us, and that is to gladden our mind, to make the landscape of our mind beautiful. So the first aspect of the practice is to give these beautiful seeds a chance to manifest. If they manifest on the upper of our level of our consciousness, we are happy, we are joyful. So a good practitioner knows how to water the wholesome seeds in him or in her every day. She has to select. Because when you, when you read a magazine, an article magazine, that article may contain a lot of uh, anger, uh, frustration, or fear. And while you are reading that uh, article, you water the unwholesome seed. They come up and you suffer. So you have to be selective in watering. You try to read only, you try to view only the things that water the good seeds in you. And this we can discuss with our children and students, because many of us are intoxicating ourselves every day by unmindful consumption. Even conversation can be very toxic. The other person may talk to us for one hour, and what she says is full of anger and fear and despair. And if we listen like that, we water those unwholesome seeds in us, and we get sick. And if you are a psychotherapist, protect yourself. Because every day you listen to histories of stories of suffering, you have to establish a balance. You have to go to the Sangha, you have to, uh, to water the good seeds in you, otherwise you cannot continue for a long time. So the good practitioner knows how to water the good seeds and uh, give them a chance to manifest up here on the level of mind consciousness. And she's happy, she's uh, pleasant, and her partner will enjoy that. And the practitioner also knows how to help the other person to do the same. Darling, if you care, 
you really you care for me. Don't water the negative seed in me. You know that I have the seed of anger, fear, jealousy, and so on. And if you water these seeds, I will be, I will suffer. And if I suffer, you have to suffer with me. <laughs> so, darling, I promise that I will not water these negative seeds in me. And you have to make the same commitment. You do not water these uh, unwholesome seeds in you. And I make the commitment not to water them in, in you. And you make the commitment not to water this unwholesome seed in me. This is a, a peace uh, treaty. You sign with your partner. And the first step of the practice is called the practice of uh, selective watering or the practice of true diligence is not to give the negative seeds down here a chance. Allow them to sleep quietly down there. If you do love me, please don't water these seeds in me. And I promise that I will not water these unwholesome seeds in you. And the second aspect of the practice is that if by chance, if it happens that one negative seed is water and manifests here as a mental formation, you should know how to help that to go back to its place of origin as quickly as possible. You don't try to suppress. There are many ways. The first, first, the first way is to invite the seed of mindfulness to come to recognize, embrace. And after a few minutes, it will lose some of its strength and it will go back to the original place here. That is uh, the first uh, method, helping that seed to go back as quickly as possible by the way of recognizing and embracing. This we have talked about yesterday already. The second way is to invite the opposite seed in here to come up. Because you have a seat of anger of violence, but you also have a seat of uh, tenderness, kindness. And when the seat of tenderness and kindness and compassion is invited to come up, their seat will withdraw by itself. It's like uh, a television set with several uh, channels, and up to you to choose. Channel one or channel two. hell or paradise, up to you to choose. Just push on a button. So the first aspect is that uh, the negative sit down here, don't give them a chance in yourself and in the other person. And the second aspect is that if uh, one of them happen to manifest here, try to help it to go back as soon as possible. Because the longer it is up here, the bigger it will grow down here at the grassroots level. People who are very angry. But 10 years ago, they were not angry like that. Because the seed of anger in him has been watered every day by himself and by his friends. So that is why not to water 
the negative seat is a practice. And we have to agree with our partner. Our partner may be our father, our mother, our son, our daughter, our friend. And then the third aspect of the practice is uh, to recognize the good seeds in you and invite them as uh, um, frequently as possible. Because their presence in the level of uh, mind consciousness will bring you joy, happiness, called gladdening our mind. The tenth And when a good seed has manifest up here, we can, we may like to keep it up there as long as possible. May the joy last, the joy demur. It's like when you have a, a good friend visiting, you like to keep him or her longer with you. The same thing is true with this. If a feeling of joy, feeling of happiness, a feeling of compassion has manifest, try to keep that feeling up there as long as you can. Because uh, the longer they, 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 they remain here, the bigger they will grow down there. At the grassroots level, the good seed will continue to grow. It's like uh, when you come to a retreat of uh, one week, uh, some of the good seeds are water, and if we, uh, we have uh, the retreat extended to two weeks, and then the good seeds will, uh, will grow bigger. So these are four uh, levels or four aspects of the practice, the negative seat don't give them a chance in me and in you. If they have already a chance to manifest, help them to go home as quickly as possible. The good seat give them a plenty of chance to manifest. And when they have manifest, keep them up there as long as possible. And that is uh, what we call in Plum Village the practice of selective watering. And you can change the situation very quickly. Even one hour of practice can already change the situation. I remember that day was a Vesak day, the anniversary of the birth of the Buddha in Plum Village. And I was giving a talk on the practice of selective water. And I saw a lady sitting in the, in the audience and she cried from the beginning of the talk to the end. So after finishing the talk, I, I went to him to, to, to her husband, and I told him, dear friend, your, your flower needs some watering. He understood right away, he understood the teaching, but he did not practice. He needed a, a sangha, he needed a teacher, he needed a friend of practice to remind him of practicing. So after lunch, he was driving home with his wife, and practice. He got the, the good seats in her. And when they arrive at their home in Bokdu, which is about one hour of drive, she was completely transformed, very joyful, very happy. And the children were very surprised. It was very quick. 
the result can come very quickly. Recognize the good seeds in him or in her. Water them, and you see. The transformation can be can happen very, very quickly. The eleven exercise is to practice concentrating. on a mental formation. You practice looking deeply into the nature of that uh, mental formation, like fear, anger, despair. And uh, the 12th exercise of mindful breathing is to liberate yourself from that mental formation, like fear, anger, despair. And this is the 12 exercises on mindful breathing. And there is another set of four. All these are, have been proposed by the Buddha. And uh, this is the third object of mindfulness. And the fourth object of mindfulness is called object of mind. Which means the world. This is about uh, perception, our perception of the world. Scientists will say that mm, this is uh, nature comprising uh, Galaxies, stars, sun, moon, trees, mountains, rivers, electrons, and so on. But in Buddhism, we say objects of mind. Because everything depends on the mind. There is one thing you can be sure of. Galaxies, or cosmos, or trees, or birds, or rivers, or mountains, they are at least the object of your mind. Because mind includes subject and object. And every mental formation also includes subject and object. To be angry is to be angry at something, at someone. You cannot be angry at nothing. So anger needs an object. Anger is a mental formation. Perception is a, a mental formation. To perceive means to perceive something. You cannot perceive uh, without an object. The perceiver and the thing that is perceived, they manifest at the same time. So sub subject and object, they inter are. You cannot take subject out of object and object out of subject. That is the nature of interbeing. It's like uh, yesterday we talked about that sheet of paper, the left and the right. You cannot take the right out of the left and the left out of the right. The same is true with perception with the mind. Mind and object of mind into R. You cannot take one from the other. And modern science begin to realize that you can no longer be an observer. You have to be a participant. And that is why in Buddhism, since uh, 2,600 years ago, we don't, we don't say object of mind as the cosmos or nature. We call it by its two names, objects of mind, including cosmos, uh, uh, mountain, river, galaxies, 
แอนสะอาดแอนเดอะฟอร์ทเรมออฟไมโครเนสคอนซิสต์ออฟพักติสับคอนเซนเทรชันที่ให้ความสามารถที่จะรักษาและสิบสองกิจกรรมทางจิตวิญญาณคือการเฝ้าระวังการเฝ้าระวังอิมเพอร์เมนส์ The f o u r t e e n is contemplating the nature nature of non craving. The f i f t e e n is to contemplate the nature of no birth and no death, which is a nirvana. Of no birth and no death of Of what is there, and the s i x t e e n exercise is contemplating letting go, letting go of idea like being, non-being, birth, death, sameness, otherness. We will speak about this uh, later on in the retreat. So the f- the last four sets of uh, exercise. Are the kind of practice of um, of uh, concentration that help liberate us from afflictions and liberate us from the kind of uh, afflictions that make us suffer.